Today we have the honor of speaking with Rosalind Flareit, who will be our princess in Sor Angelica, uh, one of the operas of this double bill. She's, I'm almost sure, the first person whom I have ever presented here who is in an opera where, she, where there are two major parts, namely Sor Angelica and the princess, and she's done both of them because she had a wonderful career as a soprano, and then and I had the opportunity to hear her as a soprano and loved it, and then she switched over to being a mezzo-soprano, and she's a real mezzo-soprano. That in itself is the first time I can remember that happening. So, but let's talk about the, the Sor Angelica, the, the, doing both of them. How can you react to that? Well, when I did Sor Angelica, I, um, I was quite young. Now I'm much older. I'm. I feel that Zia Principessa is absolutely right as well. So the, the two characters are um, obviously very different. It's so strange because Angelica is, is um, when I was playing Angelica, I would never have dreamt that I would be hit sitting here now and talking to you about my playing Zia Principessa. It's, it's an extraordinary... Uh, surreal thing actually. I was taught um, by nuns. Oh, I really? went to a convent school, yes. My mother was extremely religious, very religious. Um, I'm afraid I was not. The part of Swar Angelica, it's not her vocation. She's been put there. So in, from that aspect, I was not a real nun. But I, I had a lot of insight into convent life. Since it's so unusual, in my mind, to have a great soprano really develop a true mezzo sound. Can you talk a little bit about that, how you have that happen? Truth to tell is that when I was quite young, I sang mezzo repertory um, at a place called the London Opera Centre. Mm -hmm. Because of the colour of my voice in that area, but of course many sopranos have that colour. I mean, mm -hmm. Our present Suar Angelica, Maria Gavrilova, has that mm -hmm. dark color. The, the difference between a, a dramatic soprano, a soprano and a dramatic mezzo is, I think the color of the voice is the same, it's just the range. As a soprano, I began to feel in the late 90s, you know, that my voice just didn't want to go up there anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, it did under great duress. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, there was a conductor called Richard Armstrong, I don't know if you know mm -hmm, him, yes. and he said, um, why don't you try singing a Maris? And uh, when I did this, I, it, it felt like such uh, an elation. And when you were a soprano, you were on stage All night. the whole night. I mean, in, in almost <laughs> everything else. So that has, been an, has that been an interesting dramatic thing for you, theatrical thing? Yes, that, that's quite a challenge because you don't get long to establish that character. I do need my moment of silence and slow contemplation of what I'm about to do before I go onto the stage. When you deal with a character like this, I mean, I think the audience sometimes wonders, how do you get into an interpreter? She is mortified that, that Angelica has done this to their family. She, she loved her sister so much, and what this child did, she just cannot forgive her. She's she a strict person. She's strict. Mm -hmm. She's strict, and she, she loves her sister. She's very religious. And in those days, she, to become pregnant out of wedlock, and especially in this aristocratic family, was just the most terrible thing. It's, it's, it's a great part to play, though. I mean, it's, you know, she, you, when you were here before, you played a mother that was certainly pretty awful, but that <laughs> oh, was she fantastic. Was, she, yeah, she was really awful. Clytemnestra <laughs> and Electra, but uh, we'll she, all, all remember that. Uh, that was an amazing <laughs> performance, so I know this one will be equally great. Well, we're certainly eager to have you here on the stage. This will be very exciting to have you do The Princess. Well, I'm very excited to be here and doing it, and I love theatre.